This, this is the Dassun Paperlike 13.3 inch. It's an e-ink monitor. And I can certainly see how useful this could be, certainly for knowledge workers who need a small and portable extra screen. It will just slip in next to your laptop in your laptop bag and it will work great. Remember, if you do decide to get one, to make sure you read the documentation about how to change the display settings to get the best out of it. For instance, you want to have a pure white background, which can be a bit annoying because you can kind of lose your mouse in that but that means that you don't get the ghosting of the background every single time you change windows. And remember also, if you buy one, to be realistic about what you can and can't do here on the display. In my unboxing video, I actually looked at the letter they sent where they talked about, be realistic about what you can and can't do on the display, and then you're gonna have a really pleasurable time. It's a pleasurable place to work on your documents. It's not gonna be useful for video, it's not gonna be useful for looking at photos, and not really much good at scrolling on any website either. You do have a range of different modes though to allow you to get the best out of different content. I did use it for my normal two weeks at work and I did find it useful, I did find it pleasurable for working with text documents. I did, however, find that it was quite heavy really and a bit too much to carry around in my current work setup. You see, in my new school, I don't have a fixed base and so I'm having to set up workstations wherever I am during the day. A 13.3 inch ink monitor is ideal for that, especially for my line of work where I'm mostly working working between different documents, maybe with a reference document here on this screen and a document that I'm working into on, on color on my main laptop screen, using Word documents quite a lot and PDFs. It just gives me that extra room. However, the thing about that is you're carrying around something which is quite large and quite heavy and it can't be your one and done device. So additionally to that, I'm having to carry my note-taking e-ink tablet. So that's now another e-ink screen that I'm carrying around. So I think that it's worth, I'm gonna discuss and show some comparisons actually, between the paper like HD monitor and an e-ink tablet of the same size. So I need to have that pen input to use for my planner. And I think in the long term, I'm probably only gonna take this when I know that I'm going to have have a sustained period of time, a long period in one place where I'm going to be working on some focused documents. So although it is portable, really it's for when you're settled for a couple of hours in one spot. And then I kind of know that what will end up happening is I'm going to end up forgetting to actually just take it in my school bag. I think given that they're marketing this as a paper monitor, a paper-like monitor, they should perhaps look at the original Sony DPT-1, which is paper-like in terms of its size and weight, as well as its actual screen feel and look. This is quite a lot more heavy. So I would recommend asking that the next generation, you actually focus on the ultra portability of this screen size. You know, use plastics, make it incredibly thin so that it can slip just that bit more easily in and out of a bag and make it incredibly light as well. That being said, the aluminium construction of the paper like HD is really quite nice and it's a well-made device. I like things like the magnetic back, which allows you to connect it to a VESA monitor arm. And maybe if they did make it out of plastic, maybe they'd be criticized for not having that premium build quality that such a price demands. The thing is, you don't need a battery here. You don't need much of a chipset here. You've got the opportunity to make this even more portable, even thinner, and even lighter. Let's have a quick look at the different screen modes. The main use is going to always be for text documents. And the text mode is really clear and works really nicely for showing off text, as you'd hope. You have a video mode, which I personally don't see myself ever really using it. For videos, you can see you get a lot more ghosting in there. You still always have this one button press to do a full refresh. So I'm very pleased to say that Dustin got back to me and made something And in all of the modes, you can change the speed of the refresh by holding down the mode button and using the plus or minus. So this is just fast video mode. You can see, I think we're getting something like four frames a second there, all the way up to fast quadruple plus, which you're getting a lot more image degradation and you're retaining that mode there, but you are getting a healthy frames per second there. So out of push, if you were really wanting to use this for video, it is a possibility, but I would never really be using it for that. You can see text mode will look unusable for video as text mode is prioritizing the black and white and you have a graphic mode which actually looks quite good actually in the video. That probably looks one of the best. Let's try plus, plus, plus in graphics. I would say I've only been really using the text and the graphics mode. And really I've been purposefully only using this for text. So I've been living in that mode. But essentially I find graphics mode, if I want to do a little bit of browsing is quite good and you don't really need the full quadruple plus, sort of the double plus is good enough really. And that's okay for scrolling around websites, anything with images that you need to see 
that's quite nice. You can see there is quite a lot of ghosting here and I'll talk about that in a moment when I compare to the books tab X. I am just going to be using text mode and there are still different speeds. And actually I find that a higher speed is quite good for text, although it does not need to be on the quadruple plus. So something around the double plus text mode, that's where this monitor has been living when I've been using it. So the question is really, should you use this or should you buy something like the books tab X? And the price is not too different. Let's actually make sure of that. So $879.99, but you are getting a case, the pen and tips as well. So this one, which is just the front light without the touchscreen is $748. So there's a difference of what's that about $130, $140. Not a massive difference and you're getting quite a lot else with the Tab X. What do you miss with the Tab X though? Of course, you don't get the physical refresh buttons and you don't get the direct HDMI. Or as I'm running it now, with just a single USB-C being powered from and sending a video signal from my laptop. And that's the way I've been using it exclusively actually. But of course, you could plug this into any HDMI output. I will also say that you probably do want to go up to the one with the touchscreen because it is not such a large device, you are probably going to be spending time quite close to it. I think the extra $50 is worth getting the touchscreen personally. So perhaps it would be worth considering a new Books Tab X and using it on a stand like this. I mean, there is also the equivalent Books HD monitor, of course. Which we'll have a quick look at that as well. The Books Mirror 13.3 is about the same price. And I haven't actually tried these, but of course the Books Super Refresh technology is fabulous. You see, I think it's quite usable, isn't it? I'll also just say that there is different lighting modes. So you've got cold, you've got warm, and you've got the white kind of mix, which of course that's what I live in. Without holding down the mode button, you can increase and decrease the contrast there, which is quite useful. And if you hold down the light, you can increase and decrease the brightness with the plus and minus as well. So what you could use, of course, is you could use a Books Tab X with Space Desk. Sort of match up the front light brightness, I suppose. They are the same e-ink screen. They're both 2200 by 1650 pixels, so 13.3 inch screens. So there we are, exactly the same content. Now, what I'm running here in balanced mode, we should see down here on the books tab X is that it is clearing the ghosting as it goes. It is looking better on the Dasung at this point than that is not because the screen isn't being handled so well. What is happening that is making it look better on the Dasung is because it's got the HDMI feed, it's got the actual cable wired feed, it is getting a higher quality feed and Space Desk over the internet is not giving it as crisp text on here. Come in a bit closer. That's the Dasung and that's the books. So yeah, actually Space Desk is not quite looking quite as good on the Tab X as the direct feed is on the Dasung. And of course, at any point I can do that full refresh there. I can do a full refresh down here as well. But you can see actually I'm getting a better quality on the Dasung, I think. Cool, oh, well, that is good to see. So it is worth that for that dedicated use case. I'm just gonna try different modes actually very quickly. So let's go into the faster modes here. I'm going ultra fast there. And I'll go up to the video mode on here. So the fastest in both, I'll put on another one of my videos. Yeah, so no contest there. The book Super Refresh there is doing a fabulous job, as we might expect, of showing the video on e-ink. Yeah, no contest. This is way better. Books, and that's the Dasun. So that's interesting, isn't it? So for a dedicated screen, I would say, if you're just using it for text, which is all you should be using it for, the Dasun. If you want that little bit extra though, why not pay the extra 150 pounds to have a very powerful ink tablet as well? That's the difficult choice for the Dasun. However, perhaps you don't have administrative rights to install Space Desk on your work laptop perhaps, but you can of course just use plug and play with the Dasun screen as well. So there's that benefit as well. And actually I'm getting some really bad flicker here on the Books Tab X now, but that is, that's to do with the video feed thing rather than that. And you could do it on anything. You could plug this Dasung monitor into anything at all that can give you an HDMI out. One more thing about the Books Tab X, I wouldn't really recommend it as a stationary monitor because of course you've got the issue with the battery and if you were using it plugged in, always being powered and being discharged as well at the same time, simultaneously charging it at an ultra fast rate and discharging it very rapidly, you will actually wear out the battery pretty quick in this thing and you'll get bad battery performance after a few months. Got one more sort of secret option number three though. This is the Books Max Lumi 1. And that in fact came with an HDMI input. So that had a monitor mode. Max Lumi 2 did not. Max Lumi 1 did. Now what could you actually get a Max Lumi 1 right now used. Let's get back into graphics mode. 
pretty hard to find. I can see one on eBay for £540, so that could be an option. And then you, of course, wouldn't be so precious about the battery as well because you had an older device that probably already was not performing so well. Although, booted this up for the first time in a long time, it's still got quite a lot of battery available there. So the Max Lumi 1 can receive an HDMI feed directly. So actually that looks great. That looks straight away really, really good. But wow, you know, it is really performing very well. It looks great. So no book super refresh technology on this at all. The touch does work with Space Desk, but it doesn't work if you've just got the HDMI on. I don't know what screen mode I'm in currently on the Max Lumi 1. Let's have a little look. Click center. It's on sort of the best mode. So I'll go on the speed mode. Actually, it's handling it quite nicely. But out of these two, it probably is slightly nicer on the Dasung Paper like HD. What am I in the video, am I? Yeah, so between the two generations old Books Max Lumi and the Dassin, I think you're getting slightly better out of the Dassin, but there's not much in it. So perhaps that might be worth a look if you're looking to save a little bit and going for the Max Lumi one. But of course, for both of those, the upside is if you're carrying around a monitor for your professional use at work, we are also carrying around a tablet. So either the Max Lumi one or the Tab X could be your one and done for your planner, for your note taker, for your reader, and for your spare monitor as well. Another option, of course, is to get an LCD screen. And I've been looking at reflective LCD and I've also been looking at transmissive LCD, which is the Ezi. So there are other options as well. This is the reflective LCD. Of course, that's not a portable thing at all. But I've also been looking at a portable LCD, something like this. This is the OIWAC much lighter, can actually clip onto the back of your laptop screen and a full review of that will be coming soon as well. But of course, you're losing the benefits of the e-ink, but you are saving a lot. I'm very impressed by the Max Lumi 1 still. You can see how it being so close, I just naturally try and press it every now and then. And you can get a small 1080p monitor like this for around £100 and it'd be perfectly good. And of course, the OIWAG could be better for video or photo. So where would I rather be? I'd rather be on the Dassung for text and I'd rather be on the OIWAG for video or photo. So typing is great on e-ink now. There's this myth that e-ink is slow. Okay, if you expect it to show you videos or play games, it is, but it's great for its intended purpose, which is the written word. So another thing that I'm quite impressed with is actually the way they've incorporated the VESA into this. So it works with a magnetic arm. So there's a magnetic area on the back of the device and that can just clip onto the VSA stand. So you can leave some magnets essentially permanently attached to the screws in the VSA. And then you can just clip this up and really take it off in moments as well. And it has a little folio case, which you can just clip into as well. And that has different levels that it can stand as well. So that's really quite nice also. So if you do want something that you can set up at home and then stick into your bag, that's really useful, isn't it? it also comes with a little stick for a kickstand. If you don't want to pay the extra for the magnetic case, I've never actually set this up at all. I felt the need to. A very simple solution with one little screw hole and you have a monitor which can stand in place on your desk. Nothing wrong at all with that. I've said also that you should probably buy the touch version. So the price upgrade, we're talking about $800. is a massive upgrade in the overall pricing of being screens, but it is still not a cheap device at all. So you have to be pretty sure that this is going to make a difference in your work life. It incidentally, it's not being powered now. It's just showing whatever was the last thing on there. So none of these buttons will currently do anything. If you unplug it whilst it's on, it will show whatever was on there before. And you need to be aware of that if you're displaying sensitive information. So one thing about it is it isn't one of the largest screens and you are going to be using it on a desk next to a laptop, perhaps. That is the type of size that it is. It's dwarfed by my other screens on my desk there. Not to say that it couldn't be quite a nice device to mount next to a larger screen, maybe in its portrait mode, and you could have it for reading documents and working from between that. Not bad at all. It does feel premium, but it really will have to live up to the bill of being very good for your eyes. It really needs to do what it says it does. <laughs> Otherwise, it's a lot of money for not a lot of benefit. Ink manufacturers, they can't use the excuse forever that the panels are just too expensive. If books can give you the same panel of all the trimmings of touch and whack on pen input for a similar price, then that's only need to think about what else you're getting for that price. What else are you getting to command this price tag? I think that it just might as well have been a fully ink tablet. Or otherwise, as it is not a fully ink tablet, it doesn't need to be quite as heavy as it actually is. For instance, thinking about that original Sony DPT 13.3, it feels lighter than most ink tablets of 
any size in fact and it has to house a battery and a chipset so think about ways to decrease the price and make it more portable i think to really make this compelling and what else can you get for 800 pounds you could probably get not probably you can get two 4k lcd panels and i'd be looking at something like the asus 4k pro art displays so a pair of 4k displays i think they're 27 inches or something like that that might well be a more comfortable viewing experience than a much smaller lower pixel count ink screen there's something to be said for the ease of viewing content on much larger screens with much higher pixel density as well in terms of eye comfort it's not just the eye comfort benefits of having a reflective screen that matter the Datsun compared to the Tab X or the Max Lumi 1 it's a difficult sell however if you just need a dedicated monitor there are still some benefits and I think it's having the buttons there on the side and I think it's having the direct HDMI or of course the single USB-C port for power and signal but all around I think for value go with one of the books perhaps even the color tablets now I for instance use the Tab Ultra C Pro and I use it with Space Desk and I use it to do quick pen input into Photoshop for instance as well that's a far more versatile thing whereas this is great for a single use if you need a screen to do text editing on look no further